Hello and welcome to another edition of Gombe's Transformative Journey. I'm so excited to have you join us today. Today, we're in Kwame, local government area, where we'll be speaking with the local government chairman, Dr. Ahmed Wali Dohu. But before that, we'll be taking a review of some of the major activities and events during the past week in Gombe. Sit back and relax as we take this transformative journey together. I am Landry Adeyemi. Gombe State Government has approved a new minimum wage of 71,451 Naira, 15 Kobo, for state and local government employees. This follows the successful conclusion of negotiations between the government and organized labor, which will ensure that the lowest Gombe State employee now ends above the national minimum wage. The Ministry of Finance, the Attorney General, will go and set up the machinery to ensure that October salary reflects this 70,000 minimum wage for all workers, judiciary, local government, health workers, and every other person that is on the payroll of the Gombe State government. We can thank His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Gombe State, for giving us the, uh, his team led, led by His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Gombe State, whereby by the grace of God, within a short period of time, we are able to reach an agreement on what to be paid to civil servants of Gombe State as general. So there is no any other person that will be left out if he is in payroll of Gombe State by the grace of God. And on that note, it has been agreed now, it's going to be pay, we are going to the minimum standard of paying in Gombe State is 71,541 uh, Naira 15 Kobo. That's the minimum pay for civil servant of Gombe State as level one, step one, by the grace of God. So our prayers here is that may Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give that amount that is going to be given to civil servant of Gombe State become useful for them, useful for their family and for the generality of the state. Gombe State's governor, who is also the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, expressed his deep condolences to the government and the people of Jigawa State over the tragic tank explosion in Majia Town in Tara local government area, which claimed over 100 lives. Governor Yaya described the incident as deeply saddening, but emphasizing the need for strict safety measures and adherence to avert future occurrences. Sunana awal Ismail in Daganan Karamon Kuma Yamal to Deba Garim Mala Isa Naji Chio say Nazuana as a bit in Namu Wanda Akabu de Sagua Da Kuma Idamuga Wana Zamuji Har Wanu Bu to Kuma Yazu Allah Yona Bana in Soki Yasam Sabodaka Mungo de Mungo de Major Mabona Musan de Gatsu upgrade the Gatsu or Karinshi. I want to allow Marie. The Uvenja Allah is a Piaka Mungo de Mungo de Sunana Ali Mohammed Al Haji. A mini CPMC chairman again. I want an hospital then. Munizama by South Elba, South Yuba, and Domilsa come upon one other dispensary to a Maharaga Allah for pleasure them. Ya ko karfin wannan dispensary din. Alhamdulillah muna samun ci gaba muna samun ci gaba. Alhamdulillah muna godiya ga mai girma gwamnati. Duk wanda ma yake da hannu akan gina mana wannan hospital din muna masa godiya. Allah ya sanya alkhairi. Welcome back. As I told you earlier, that we'll be having a conversation with Dr. Ahmed Walidoho, the chairman of the Kwame Local Government Area of Gombe State. Honorable Chairman, thank you for joining me in this interview. Thank you and good morning. Yeah, um, coming all the way from Gombe to Kwame, I realized that the road is good and I see lots of farming communities on both sides of the road. I saw cattle moving, I saw um, livestock, grains, bags, and co. It's as if Kwame is a major um, agricultural hub. 
exactly you rightly said it. Kwame is agri agrarian community. Predominantly, our activities are agricultural activities. So it's not surprising that you see people going to farms and you see agri produce going to markets and so forth and so forth. So that is our major profession here. Okay, so before we go into the details of what makes Kwame special, let's talk about your assumption of office after the election um, into office as the local government chairman um, and what you met on ground. Can you tell us exactly the drive to serve at the grassroots level to become a local government chairman? Then what you met in office, what was your manifesto? What, what were your ideas? What did you want to bring to the office? My local government is my house. I served the local government for almost 25 years, from clerical assistant to secretary to the local government before I left the university. And there, most of my publications focused on local government because of the interest that I have in local government. So in the university, I grew up to the position of associate professor. But yet, I feel that I need to come back and serve my people because I've already concluded that you can only come in touch with the people at the grassroots if you are in the local government services. So I choose to come back and serve them. God in his infinite mercy, I was selected. So from the time that I assumed office, my goal, my mission was to serve the people at the rural areas and to address their own problems. And that is why I feel satisfied with what I'm doing and I drive joy in what I am doing for the localities. Mm. Okay. You know that there is a popular perception that the local governments don't really do much. That um, if there is going to be any meaningful development, it has to start from the grassroots level. And development cannot start from the top down. It's from bottom up. So if the local governments are doing well, then naturally development and the dividends of democracy will get to the people. So can you share with us some of the things that you met on ground and how you've improved on them, knowing that you're an academic, a PhD holder? Many times people don't even believe that local government chairmen are supposed to be well-educated. They think that motor parks, garage boys, and co can be local government chairmen. So what have you brought to the table? Um, you see, you belong to the localist scholars. They believe that anything that is going to stand the test of time must start from the grassroots. Um, you see, when I came to the local government, I found out that uh, there are certain basic needs, basic necessities, which the local government need to provide the common man at the grassroots. And um, furthermore, you see, the local government operation in this country, the circumstances surrounding the operations differ from one area to the other. For Gombe State, I want to make it categorical that our governor being a very good financial manager, he tried very well to stabilize the financial problems of the local government. So much so that when I took over, I don't need to borrow a single cobo to pay salary. No, I need to borrow a single cover for any project that I feel. But the only thing is that he makes sure that he supervises our expenditure. Not that he take our money, no. Our money is with us. But he supervises and makes sure that whatever you are going to do has a direct bearing on the lives of the people in the rural areas. So when I came on board, I now prioritize some of the areas in line with the policies of His Excellency. So I address areas of health, um, water provision, you know, being a rural community. In some areas, at times, as I earlier told you, being a localist idea, the people in the community will tell you what they need, not you dictate mm -hmm. to them what you think is correct. So at times, they only need water. In some instances, they just need a small culvert or something of that nature. So if you are in contact with them, you will now be informed about what are their basic necessities that they needed. So when I came on board, I embarked on this uh, mobilization drive. I went around the woods, I had interaction with them. They knew me, I know them, because it's my locality. So we robbed mines and now try to come up with some areas that requires urgent intervention, immediate, before we prepare our own budget 
this time around. So we, uh, based on that, I identify some key areas and sectors, like particularly water. The water sector, from my own angle, I felt that it's a basic necessity. It's a need that you cannot play with it. So we embark on renovation of and reticulation of water, uh, boreholes, and uh, reticulating this water to some localities and so forth and so forth. And we did a little bit good because I am satisfied with what we have done so far within the short period of time. Furthermore, I went around to inspect some of our um, dilapidated health facilities. We renovated some and uh, we forward some to the government house for a joint effort from the state and so forth. And uh, furthermore, we try to, to, to bring peace, to narrow the gap of political division or divide within the system. So much so that the youth, youth hooliganism, you can yeah. see that it's virtually absent. absent. These are calorie boys. The one is over in Kwame, there's... I sat down okay. with them and spoke to them very well. And I, I sort of mentor them, guide them, and uh, if you consider nobody's around here, what I usually do is, if there is a present need, where I will ask you, what was your profession or what was your area special before you joined this gallery? If I can intervene personally, I will help you and you go back. So that tempered down or simmered down the tempo of political differences in the system. So this allowed me to rub minds with our political uh, stakeholders so that we will now address issues. But there's a point you made that I wanted to emphasize on is the fact that the state government does not control local government funds Definitely. in Gombe. You said your money is with you, that the governor just helps supervise it, but you do not pay the money into the state government account, that your money is with you. Can you talk about this? Because a lot of fi financial <laughs> autonomy is one of the things that um, people have been talking about for local governments. Yeah, you see, that autonomy, I was an architect of the struggle for autonomy. Mm, okay. And um, when I conducted the National Delegate Conference of Nolige in Lagos, I had an interview with your people. So the, th the problem people are having with the local government operation now is the behaviors of some of our political class. For Gombe State, when I came on board, I understood that, yes, our governor is a very competent financial manager. As far as Gombe State is concerned, anything that belongs to Gombe State today, if it is being forwarded from Revenue Mobilization Commission or wherever it's coming from, it will hit my account. And once it hits my account, I will see the alert, my secretary will see it, my treasurer will see it. So it is in my own account. In a local government account? local government account. Up till now, presently, now I have my balance of money in my account. But what we do is, we have an understanding. And that understanding is, we agree to do certain projects jointly, based on percentage, as per the provisions of the constitution or the law of the state. So, uh, for us in Gwembe State, autonomy may not very much make any difference. The only thing because is you already had the autonomy already before. we had that financial autonomy. but the autonomy is not only limited to finances there's political autonomy, autonomy and yes. so forth which has to do with the people generally the process of electioneering and so forth but as far as our money is concerned each and every local government in government state knows how much is in his coffers and therefore as i told you in order not to reverse the situation back to what we, where we were before, the governor is very keen about your expenditure. So whenever you want to spend that money, it's a matter of just writing to him and he allow you, or maybe the ministry gives you approval and you go ahead and do. But anything short of that, he is not tempering with your money for any purpose. Okay, so stuff. let's talk about the joint projects. Um, I spoke with the Director General of the Gombe State Joint Development Agency, who spoke about some of the joint projects between the local government and the state government. These projects, um, can you tell us about some of the key areas that are priority to Kwame and the joint projects that have been done in Kwame? In fact, many. When it comes to roads, His Excellency did very well for our people. 
he you know he is a leader so we follow him and uh, we are seeing wisdom in following him if you come up with the idea we if we feel the idea is good we keep him we had joint project in several areas with the state government which i'm proud to tell you that most of these projects if we start we complete it on time <laughs> without abandoning each of these projects roads constructions we constructed a road from Bojude to Dilwe, from uh, Kano Main Road through Tapi to Konflata. There is one in Buba Shongo. There is one from Kiari to Gadam. There is one from Dukul to Shani. So all these are joint projects. And so okay. you've mentioned already like six roads already. Of course, and many more are coming. Okay. Many more are coming because His Excellency is such a person that loves developing the rural communities. All our 10 world headquarters have been provided with solar street light, equal to that one in the town, in headquarters, in the capital. So for Kwame, we are already more or less semi-urban. There were all these factors that have been pushing People to drift from rural areas to urban areas, we have taken care of them. Okay, but can you talk about the importance of these district heads? Because um, people, when it comes to security, Gombe has enjoyed relative peace, Gombe State, even during the peak of the insurgency in 2011, 2012. And people attribute this to both purposeful leadership and the role of traditional institution in rejecting violence you see the traditional institution is an institution that you cannot overlook it when it comes to security of the community one they serve as an instrument of facilitating information so they disseminate immediate information which will guide security operatives to act promptly furthermore we have a sort of a operational module in this state where there are local committees under the chairmanship of these district heads and traditional rulers. So they filtered the, the, the local information at source. They now feed the local government. We, the local government here, we have security committee, and uh, we immediately now write a security situation report to the state government, where the state security committee will now sit and intervene. All these things that I'm telling you, they are taking place simultaneously and very fast without any delay. So the traditional rulers played a very vital role. Furthermore, they keep us abreast and informed about anybody that is coming in and is a stranger. So we enjoyed their relationship and their, 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 their cooperation and uh, it yielded a lot of fruit because they are playing a strategic role. They are playing a very strategic role in disseminating information about who is there, what is he doing, and where did he come from. So we have that synergy. And that is why we, we thank God that it worked. And uh, we thank God that even during the period of the height of the insurgency, we always maintain contact. And that information dissemination helped our security operators very well. Significantly. But before we round off, I wanted to talk about ed the key areas of education, health, um, basic water supply. Can you just talk about maybe some of the things the local government has done in these areas? You see, like water first. I think we renovated around 14 to 15 boreholes. We sunk two and we reticulate around three. Furthermore, so all together uh, like 20. Eh, almost. Okay. And we are on it. You're still on it. Yeah, we are okay. on it. Even today, we are on identifying some. That is why we bought a motorcycle specifically for supervisors to go around and see which boreholes are grounded not waiting for the community even to report so the moment they bring back the information we just immediately intervene education wise um we have been making effort to make sure that uh, we contain the population of school dropouts 
And uh, in view of this, we had meetings and series of meetings with parent teachers associations, uh, with community leaders and opinion leaders. And uh, we made sure that uh, the education secretary supervises staff very well. And they go to schools. And anywhere that we feel the school requires intervention, you will see, if you go around, you will see for yourself some of the structure that the state and uh, at times the state and the local government yeah. put in place. Okay. So all this was an effort to make sure that we complement the structural deficiencies in this, our systems. And furthermore, we printed some exercise books to help our students. And uh, I, in particular, I am very interested in education of the people with disability. Okay. So we, I paid special attention to our students that we sent to special, special schools. schools. And I went around some times back. I saw some small, small boys begging in the street. Some are, we have one that is a blind, we took him, sponsored him. There is one that just yesterday I finished paying all his school fees to send him. So all these boys that are having uh, they are, they are, they are, that are physically are challenged. challenged. Okay, we we help them. So make sure they get quality they get education. Quality because through that policy, I recall when I was in the local government in the nineteen twenties or nineteen, we this similar program where we uh, attempt, and uh, we, we we now the boy is I think a PhD holder. He's now a lecturer in from the state university, but he's black. It's been a wonderful conversation with uh, just had with you. Um, it's interesting and really reassuring when we see leaders at the grassroots level who are really trying to make a difference. We know that the resources are not adequate, but the little you're getting, you're doing something tangible with it. And hopefully the people that you're serving can would appreciate it and can feel the impact of the government at the grassroots level. The chairman of Kwame local government, Dr. Ahmed Wali Doho, took us around the communities within the local government to show us the project of the local government area council and some partnerships that it's doing with the state government. So the primary health care centers are all working. They are all working. Functionally, all functioning. They are all working. Because I can even see patients here. Yes, yes. Now, you know, this, this yeah. decentralized the, the, the movement of people from the rural area to the urban center or maybe general hospital in Gombe or maybe the cottage hospital. So we have 25 staff here and uh, we monitor their activities daily. That is why you see people patronizing them. They have started working from Gadam, coming to this direction. So uh, they are coming, they have already gone far in clearance. And not only this one, there is one in Ukul, from Ukul to Shani, further to the water boundary the with boundary, the state. Okay. Yes, and uh, the one that I mentioned to you earlier, there is one from Bojude to Diriri. There is one from Tapi Junction to Oboma but uh, this road, for people who don't know this place, this is like a bypass that people coming from Kano, people coming from certain, like, um, should I even say, people coming from that part of Darazo in Yobe yes, State yes. and are coming towards um, Ashaka or going towards Boju Day. Um, so, um, so, so, sorry, Malam City, um, Malam City or Malibra, all those places. Yes. They don't have to go in through Gombe. They don't need to go that way. And furthermore, it's also a lot of communities around yes, this place. The, the wisdom is that the interior people, they are agrarian people. And uh, most of farm produce that have been produced in the interior, we are using the road now to facilitate transporting all these food items to the um, urban areas so that it can improve marketing activities yes. between farmers' interior and our people and our people, the urban areas.
we've seen the hospitals, the schools, the culvert, the renovation work, and the water supply scheme by Kwame local government, which actually is a testament to the fact that truly development is at the grassroots level and the local government are central to this. That's the much we can bring to you on this episode of Bombay's Transformative Journey. Do join us again same time next week for another episode. But if you miss any of our episodes, you can watch it again on our social media platforms. I am Landry Adiemi.